one step. Might have somebody who's a bit, bit tired, got a sore ankle or whatever. So I want to safeguard him with a rope. This is our cliff. So I'm now looking straight up the hillside, not over to the left or to the right. And straight away, this boulder here is looking pretty unquestionable. So I'm going to take a walk round it and just see where the lift is on it and make sure it's, the rope's not going to lift up and over. You can see it's undercut down here. It's got a nice lift on it this side and it's undercut here. So I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to give it a token kick, but let's be honest. That's about two tons of rock, it's not going to lift. Cool, so I now need to start thinking about how I'm going to tie the rope to this. The most straightforward way of doing that, pay out what you think one loop round is going to be, tie an overhand knot. Everything for your ML can be done with an overhand knot or a figure of eight. Tie my overhand knot going to walk the other end just back around the boulder taking care to make sure it's nice and low down in there back to our start point Where is that? shift it back down All I'm doing there is just rolling the knot so that it's at this end. I'm then going to be sat where I'm going to be sat and I'm going to pull either side and just work it to make sure it doesn't lift up and it also gives the rope a chance for it to seat down if there's any turf that it's against. I'm just going to re-thread that overhand knot. So I start going in the same way, come round the back. And that is the rope safely and securely attached to that boulder, bearing in mind that I'm leaving a good tail. Sort of 30 centimetres or more is what you want. If it was just there at the end of the rope, I'd adjust it. Cool. I then gonna think I'm gonna be sat here where I can get my feet really braced in against some of these boulders. Alright? So I'm gonna put the rope, take it pass it round me got the rope passed round tie a figure of eight no we didn't use the figure of eight were you doing something else? Yes. you can either do that or if you're in question of it you can just tie another overhand knot Cool, there's my loop. I'll step into that. Was that some similar to what you that's were shown? That's more like it, yeah. Cool, we'll do what you were shown then, because that's what you've seen and what's going to stick in your head potentially more. So I just adjust that so it's nice and tight around me. Brilliant stuff. Right, and I'm going to backflake my rope keeping everything neat. Sarah, could I get you over here? Oh, Lisa. Um, Lisa, could I get you over here? An ongoing sketch for today. Oh, I know. It's been awful. What method were you shown to tie your client We'd on? We'd probably do an overhand knot, something similar to that, and then um, you'd that it'd be a, a loop which would go around and you'd re-thread the other end through it but you'd put a stopper knot so it didn't then strangle the client so we'll do that then that yep that's the kind of thing tie an overhand knot i then tie a stopper knot here if you zoom in on this this is quite crucial being sure to wrap the rope back down when you do your two twists there because you see as I wrap downwards, I'm actually wrapped around these two strands of rope here. Yep. Where if I wrap upwards, do you see how I'm just wrapping around one, one strand of rope there? So it actually generates a different knot. <laughs> one being a secure, safe thing to use and one being a death-defying thing to use. 
So let's do that. And I might actually just feed a bit more in so that we've got a good chunk of tail. So if you always think like 30 centimetres or more as your sort of tail, you've then got a sliding loop and you're just going to move that overhand knot to adjust for different waist sizes of person. So if I get you to step into there and lift that up so it's around your waist, we'll adjust that round. We can actually make Ooh, that a not bit bad, not bad slightly smaller for yourself. And that overhand knot stops it tightening too much. It won't strangle the person. It won't strangle your client. Lovely. Right, Lisa, if you just take one step backwards, give me space to sit down. I'm tied in. This goes directly behind me here. Okay, so it doesn't matter if my dead rope's on this side or on that side. It'd just be wishing more comfortable exactly. for you. If this was tied into my harness, then it does matter because yeah. it's coming across one side. But it being directly behind, we're safe as ours is. As it so happens, I've coiled all the dead rope with this yep. over there. So that's going to be the side that I take my half twist in. Brace myself into position so that it's tight behind me here. There's no slack between our belay through to our, sorry, our anchor through to our belayer through to our climber. And I'm nice and securely braced. Find something nice and solid to pop my feet on. And if you just start walking backwards. And then if I want to lock, my arm just comes across. You just lean back. Lean back, give it like, as far as you can. And I honestly, I'm doing this with one hand quite comfortably here. Hypothetically, if you had to go down more than one big step, would you probably put your rucksack on to save yep. and um, again, burning your back? I've only got, not got my rucksack on now because we've just topped out of a scramble. Yeah. In reality, you're going to have your rucksack on. Um, I'd potentially wear uh, a protective layer as well. Not one of your posh ones though, because it'll get burnt. Fancy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'd put an extra layer on, especially if it was like a sunny day and I was in a t-shirt. Yeah. You're a summer ML, it's quite possible you'd be in a t-shirt and shorts. I'd put a layer on just to protect my myself a little bit more. Yeah. Because as soon as there's weight in this, and it's tight and it's moving, yeah. you're generating a lot of friction behind your back, you could potentially like get a bit of a rope burn or whatever. Yeah. But anyway, and then if you was coming towards me, you're now doing an up climb, it's the same process, but if you take one step, take both strands, slide down. Take one step, take both strands, slide down. And so on and so forth. So at no point is that rope not being held mid-step whatever it is if you start to go yeah. Jack's got every chance of keeping all that rock in a, uh, keeping all that rope in a firm way and keeping you safe. Brilliant. Thank you for the demonstration. That's okay.